Alrighty, folks. Hello and welcome to AA97. I'm going to try and mostly wing this one because uh, I don't have a world of notes for these later ones. I, I didn't work on them enough, apparently. So I'm going to try and wing this one. We'll see. But let me get through all my introductory stuff and then we'll get to the uh, comment that we have to deal with. All right. Hello and welcome to AA Answering Atheism. Episode 97. We're almost to 100. Oh boy, very exciting. And then I want to change it all up. Change everything. Thanks for tuning in here today. It is quite a joy for me to be able to speak in this casual discussion today based upon an atheist comment that I've selected from off the internet, which includes my notes to guide me along for the sake of time. I'm a former atheist who got saved and later to the Y2K scare as, long as, I, as, as far as I can recall. And then we got a quote before we get to the comment. From Joseph Goebbels, truth was unimportant and entirely subordinate to tactics in psychology. All right, already to the already to the um, the quote. It terrifies me that the fear of hell is the only thing keeping Christians from raping and murdering everyone around them. I read that just just a minute ago, and I had this really good thought. So hopefully, I keep that in mind here. But it, it let, let's let's go through this slowly. Let's go through it nice and slowly. That's what she said. Oh boy, I had to. I had to. Sometimes you just have to. It terrifies me. What's the subtlety there? He's presuming that that's wrong. That that's bad, that that's wrong. What's his standard? Why is that wrong? Is it morally wrong um, for him to be afraid? Or is he just saying this? I don't think he's really actually afraid of Christians. I think he's just saying that as part of his spiel here. But it terrifies him that the fear of hell is the only thing that only thing keeping Christians Well, hold up a second. Let's for the sake of argument, let's just concede for a second. Let's say it were the case. I, I do this once in a while, quite fairly often, more recently. But if that were the case, then kind of wouldn't that be a good thing then? Because it would kind of be an inversion. The, the fear of hell from the other side of the fence, if this were the case, that would kind of be a good thing then, if it was restraining people from doing bad acts. <clears throat> but no, no, th this is completely total faulty. He's, he's thinking of it in like a I think he's thinking of it in like a, it, it seems to be like bordering on like a Catholicism sense, Catholics. Um, I think, wasn't that the thought I had? It terrifies him that the fear of hell is the only thing keeping Christians from raping and Murdering everyone around them. Um, oh my goodness, my mind is wandering all over. Um, no, no, no. It's 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 not the only thing. I don't know where I was getting that Catholic bit from. I I, I can't recall the fullness of it, but now I don't. I just don't see where it fits. Dang it. 
Um, should have noted it down. Um, no, no, no. People have a God-given conscience that directs them to um, moral truth. Moral truth, whatever is objectively moral or immoral. And of course, you can burn that out. You don't want to burn that out. You don't want to burn out. But, you know, everybody kind of has their weak spots with different things. Um, so it, it's not the case that fear of hell is the only thing keeping Christians from doing bad acts. All right. Now, I, I just got the hint of that Catholic thing again. Now, now what is it particularly? That the fear of hell is the only thing keeping Christians from doing bad acts. It's in there, but I, I, I'm having a difficulty trying to communicate it. Um, oh, it, okay, okay, I got it. It's the ordeal of losing one's salvation or keeping it and maintaining it, and there's different views on that. Um, so it, it, it's got the Catholic sense of, you know, um, maintaining one's salvation and I guess cleansing and getting rid of it once one botches, messes up morally. But it's totally faulty in the uh, Christian view. You either have your salvation or you don't. You don't need to maintain it through your efforts, your goodness, or your refraint from bad. So there is not, in the most 101 basic sense there is not a fear of hell with a Christian because one knows one is spared from that through grace and mercy of God so there's not the fear of hell in the sense one can lose their salvation by doing a morally bad act. There is the probably the good general human fear of something like that of hell versus the the good alternative, the ideal that's a free gift. Absolutely bonkers to not accept the free gift. Um, but he just, you know, he, he says it terrifies him. I, I, I keep getting on that. You know, why, why does it terrify him? What? You know, ultimately, not nothing matters. There's no... There's no aftermath. There's no afterlife. There's no judgment. Um, one is just going from point A to point B. Um, so, if nothing ultimately matters, why why would he be afraid of this sort? The utter, the utter, oh my gosh, we're not on a farm, move over, oh my goodness, the utter, the other, the other subtlety built into this, the other subtlety built into this, he's presuming the Christian worldview by implying that rape and murder are objectively 
absolutely morally wrong rather than just uh, subjective and arbitrary and it's not true that it's wrong or not. It's just one against another person's opinion. It's, it's just moral neutrality, essentially. So he's presupposing Christianity. Objective morals based upon an objective moral lawgiver. So I have to ask, why would those things be wrong? Why would those things be wrong? He's presupposing the Ten Commandments. You know, thou shalt not kill, a.k.a. murder unjustly, taking life, and thou shalt not steal and covet and different things like that. You know, rape could fall under the categories of a number of them. So... He's presupposing Christianity. He's borrowing from Christianity. Interesting. But on the other side of the fence, why are they wrong? Why are they wrong? Uh, you know, that stuff would be throughout secular history, all of secular history. It's just nature. It's just nature. If man is just animal, why is it wrong for man but not for animals? There's a great inconsistency. Great inconsistency. And then on top of that, another minor subtlety is he's implying, just implying that the, it's just kind of built in, that the refraint from the rape and murder is also good. So, his arbitrary subjective opinion. So, why is the rape murder wrong? As I said, we got a given conscience that directs us and will Give us the alarm bells when we're kind of going outside the circle. You don't want to numb that. You don't want to numb it. Fear. There's... There can be good things with fear, and there can be bad things with fear. Um, you know, there can be... Uh, phobias or um, anxiety. There can even be the fear of fear. Um, those things are not, not good, not ideal. Been there, done that, probably most of us. And then there's healthy fears. Um... Apparently, I can't come up with tons that on the spot, but um, e eating a bad burrito, um, bad taco, um, you know, uh, crossing the street without looking, that's a good fear. Um, And um, fear of God, not enough of that these days from any particular angle. If one had more fear of God, one would honestly be less inclined to do certain bad acts. We all got weak spots. So I'm talking on the individual sense, broad perspective of individuals.
And then, of course, the Christian side, we got image of God, very high value upon man. Um, the other side, just subjective value of man. What is man? I mean, 61 million pre-born uh, lives ended. So... So there's the difference. And then just a minor bit on fallibility. Christians are still fallible to making mistakes, just so you know. We're still fallible. We still, the body is still corrupt. It's still fallen. It still has a sin nature. So, there's a back and forth. There's a back and forth. We're still capable of messing up. We're still capable of being fallible to different things. Materialism. Um, love of money. Um general corruption um, letting power get the best of us um, coveting things we don't have that we shouldn't covet um, many different things e even you know even hating people, which I just don't go there. Um, instead, instead of being selfish and selfish and cowardly, this vlog kind of helps me to be the opposite of some of my weaknesses. Afraid of public speaking, and yet we're speaking to the whole world. Kind of funny. Kind of funny. I didn't know what to do, so I just made my own unique series I thought might be interesting. Um, so, and hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. So, let me just rebound quick. Is it true that it's morally morally wrong to rape or murder? Is it true that it's morally wrong to rape and murder? It's kind of a gotcha I got built up. Truth is immaterial. The atheist can't let the immaterial be, or else it gives ground to God being able to exist. God, outside of time, space, matter, immaterial. So, it kind of creates a problem, in my opinion. Maybe it, it kind of delves deeper in that, and it doesn't, but uh, just kind of skimming with my thinking of it, it, it creates a problem. So anyhow, let me uh, end off with the gospel here as we like to do. That's what it's all about. Um, instead of being selfish, spending my time selfishly on myself or for myself, 
I get to care about you. Whoever you might be, wherever you might be, I get to care about you. I don't hate you. We might disagree on tons of stuff, but I'm going to care about you. That's the thing. And none of this being hate speech, I just I just care about you. It's the opposite of hate speech. It's love speech. We should do a thing about that. We'll just sort of reverse whatever folks say is hate speech. Just say love speech. Start tagging everything. Whatever uh, people want to silence viewpoints and say things are hate speech, then start saying it's love speech. So, kind of counters that. Hmm. All right. Romans 3.23, for all the sin to come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love towards us that in, the, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10.9, that if you confess your brother, with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 5 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Gotta go. Thanks for watching. Take your goal. Cool.